Welcome to heaven. What would you like to hear me say? You weren't forgiven? Can't happen. Try coming back some other way. I am what I am. I'm God, the egoless, omnipresent, and omnipotent. I am omniscient as an all-seeing eye in a triangular halo atop an unfinished pyramid with its capstone toppled off, so where's the Ben Men stone if it's not now the Kaaba stone in Mecca? Cause we all know it ain't the stone of scone that serves as the anointing altar for our modern false messiahs, unfit to rule yet thrust into the burden to do so only by their christening. Cresting the waves or passing the rest, I remain the best to pass any test. We all know the stone of scone and the Barney stone were only later contents, replacements for those second stones stolen by Menelik, Prince of Solomon and Sheba, their son, and spirited to Lake Tana Kirkus near the Nile River's source before being taken to Oxum and the Golden Ark of the Covenant that contained the tablets of testimony written by Moses as described in Exodus to replace the first set containing the Ten Commandments written by the hand of Jah Allah and Nai Elohim called by the term Tetragrammaton that Moses smashed when he first came down from Mount Horeb and found his brother Aaron leading the Habaru speakers of his new wandering nation in pagan ritual ceremonies like the heathen Egyptians, worshipping a bull and blazing from gold while in the skies above them seven planets aligned including the sun and moon and an eclipse in conjunction in the constellation of Taurus, symbolized by the brazen apples, but Moses wasn't having this, so he smashed God's commandments, and the first set was then replaced with the tablets of the testimony, and these were placed into the golden brazen art vessel box and locked in by a pair of cherubim, where they acted magnetically in an acidic fluid medium to conduct a capacitating DMP electricity, acting like a giant ancient battery, in which they transported across the Red Sea the original stones containing the Ten Commandments, written by the God of Moses that he then smashed it, finding his people worshipping the Apis. But where were these stones prior to this event we know so well from such biblical lies as the Exodus, serving as the lids of the kings and queens chamber sarcophagi, one lid for each sarcophagus, each a cubit in width, each in length, one cubit times three, and these were stolen by Moses and Aaron, known in Egyptology as Amenhotep IV and Tutmosis V. So when Tutmosis V faked his own death, Amenhotep IV changed his name to Akhenaten and founded the city of Akhetaten Amarna in Upper Egypt. From here he taught the Habarus to worship as their sole deity, the solar disk of Aten, another name of Ra, called also Horus, son of Osiris and prototype of Zoroaster, Mithra, and the Catholic concept of Jesus as the Son of the Great Son, God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in one ineffable divine revelation alone can fathom the meaning implicit in the labyrinthian musings of mystics, the inspiration for the modern concept we have of God as a big booming voice and an old bearded man living in the sky, so thank Akhenaten the next time you say amen. When you pray to him beyond your pay grade to comprehend, let me just tell you this, my friend, my friend. Try to keep notes, but just imagine this. I cannot became Moses, stole the lid of Pharaoh Khufu sarcophagus, used in a Baghdad battery container to make the Red Sea split, but the Egyptians took the same design and beat him to it. Pharaoh Khufu's so-called tomb was a power plant from its first late breaking. You all know this. Look at the design with the three chambers in mind. There's the king's chamber above the queen's below it, and in the basement catacombs, a chaotic room. Some speculate was flooded, others say it was left unfinished. To symbolize the Egyptian concept of hell as an underworld pit and cave with rituals to make the mummies were kept hidden from the common Egyptian Masonic builders and craftsmen, known only to the great architect Imhotep, and compare these chambers and their placement relative to one another in light of their missing crypts, lids aligning above and below like the prongs of a plug, the lowest room housing canopic battery cells in liquid suspension while at the top of the entire structure rested the Ben-Ben capstone of the whole concept, the construction's focal apex, once the resting place of the Kaaba stone, a black-hued polished smooth stone that was found aeons ago and is said to have come from a comet's impact, found in a crater surrounded by tectites and trying to top the greatest of the Giza pyramids until who knows when, then it ended up in Mecca, closer to the homeland of the ancient Babylonians when the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, guided by an archangel, arrived to propose a solution for how to place the stone into the corner of the sacred Azheed.